Welcome back again to climate response architecture videos. Uh, we are going to see about unit number four, part number one, which is called light and lighting. In this chapter, we are going to see about daylighting and artificial lighting, the effects of daylighting, the technical aspects of daylighting, etc. So light is the essence of life. It gives you the symbolism. It shows you what is the native. It gives you a clarity. In architecture, it reveals about the space and form. It gives you an experience, it shows you the path and its configuration and it also gives you uh, aesthetics and appeal to the whole scene or space. In climatology, it gives you a visual comfort by which you feel very comfortable and that comfortness is giving you a psychological comfort and be to this psychological comfort you are able to work in terms of your physiological body. So thus light becomes a very important factor in our life which gives you a lot of comfort. Light, you can see how architects have produced or how architects have revealed themselves by means of their space and bringing in light inside the building. So if you see experience, you can see the experience of the REM colas, how you experience in a path. And if you see about space, how the whole space is lit due to the skylight or the atrium. If you see form, Frank Gehry has played with a lot of forms which brings in a lot of light with various forms which is based on daylighting techniques. And if you see the older, uh, older, older historical aspects, if you see so the light is having a meaning. So thus it gives you a lot of meaning in terms of uh, light and daylight. So if you can see the Pantheon room, uh, the, the meaning is revealed that the light is God. So light has also become a, a very innovative factor in a lot of buildings where you can see light is achieved by creative fenestrations. So there is a lot of creative fenestrations such as openings which are slit openings, which are skylight openings, maybe openings from the side etc. which gives you a lot of uh, play of light inside the building which gives, which creates a lot of uh, uh, what you called uh, uh, interest and a lot of uh, fascination towards the movement of the building. So thus light becomes a major factor in influencing the people's movement also inside the building. So we are going deeply into the subject called as daylighting. So generally as a sustainable uh, student or an architect, the first uh, uh, the technique or the approach is must be a three tire approach where we must have the first tire which is a basic tire which we have already seen in the previous chapters. So the first tire will concentrate for the lighting. We have to concentrate on the lighting geometry, the colors and finishes of the light. So the lighting geometry depends on the form, shape, and the type of opening and fenestration etc. The second tire depends on the daylighting. So you how you are going to bring in daylighting by means of the size of the opening or by means of the technical aspects of the opening etc. So after that we will go for the electrical lighting. So tire 1 must almost satisfy about 70 percentage and here you must actually achieve this about 20 percentage and maybe electrical lighting about 10 percentage. So if you use in this manner, so you are a sustainable architect, architect who is able to uh, achieve the daylighting techniques in a very sustainable manner. So light, we can see some of the fundamental uh, technical definitions of light. So the source of daylight is sun. The brightest sunshine is going to be 100 kilo lux, which is almost equal to 1 lakh lux. The thermal radiation which is emitted because of the sunlight is almost like 1 kilowatt per square meter. So we understand light is nothing but we call it as the invisible visible light. We have the infrared and the ultraviolet rays on the left and right side. So it is from 4 into 10 to the power of minus 7 to 7 into 10 to the power of minus 7. We have the solar radiation spectrum where uh, we can also know how much spectral irradiance, irradiance is uh, is also emitted because of the sun. So we have the visible light, we have the light and also the effect of the irradiance, irradiance, irradiance along with the light. So we can note down all these things. So next one we have to go into the definitions of light. The first one is the measure in units. The intensity of light source is measured in units is called as candela. 
so if if you have this candle this is called as the candela so this candle is going to emit a intensity or uh, emit light so that light emitted is called as the candela the flux of light is measured in lumens the flux is nothing but the light which is emitted which is also measured by means of an output it's called as the lumens so the lumen is always called as the light output one lumen is the flow of light emitted by a unit intensity point source within a unit solid angle so if there is a solid angle and if there is going to be the light in intensity which is going to fall on that angle on that square foot etc that is called as the lumen so we understand lumen is nothing but is equal to the amount of light emitted by one candle falling on one square foot of surface one foot from the candle so this this portion which the light is going to fall is called as the lumen so if this portion is going to extend so your lumens are going to be little bit uh, away and your lumen efficiency or the lumen intensity might go low okay now what happens is that is lumen and uh, whatever falls on the surface and whatever the surface is measured is called as the lux so for example we have to know what is called illuminance there are two terms one is called illuminance the symbol e comes from the french language it's the measure of illumination of a surface so for example if the light is going to fall on a surface so let it be a vertical surface let it be a horizontal surface so if it's going to fall on a surface and if it's measured on that surface it is called as the illuminance and that measurement is done by the units called as lux the unit is called as lux which is the illuminance caused by one lumen instant of 1 meter squared area so whereas luminance is nothing but the perception or the way how we are going to see the light when it is falling down on a uh, on a surface so for example its unit is cd candela per meter squared which is the unit intensity of a source of unit area and its apparent area viewed from a nominated direction so we have to know from which direction are we measuring or are we seeing the light is called as the luminance so the light perception or the visual perception which is seen by our eyes is called as the luminance generally light is measured by a instrument called as lux meter which gives you the measurement in terms of lux so the lux so the measurement which is giving is is given is actually called illuminance which is nothing but the measurement for about 1 lumen per meter squared so if it's like 1 meter squared so it's almost like 1 meter squared so whatever the measure which is in 1 meter squared 1 meter by 1 meter is called as the illuminance which is given by this lux meter so we have a uh, lot of measure and units there is a little of, little bit of comparison of light whether it is going to be bright or whether it is going to be light etc or whether it is going to be low so we can just understand a comparison which is very interesting so one foot candle is almost like 10.764 lux so which gives you a lot of uh, 10 lux so it can actually lit a room okay one lux is almost like full moon so the full moon it's little far away so the full moon actually gives you only one lux 10 lux is the lux which is emitted or which is the illuminance of the street lighting so you can just see a street lighting from 100 to 1000 lux it is the lux level which is actually available for a workspace or any space in residential area so that is the lux level which is available 10000 lux is the lux level which is uh, used for the surgery and lighting so surgery lighting so it needs a lot of light because uh, you need to do a lot of uh, uh, intricate operations etc so the surgery needs a lot of lighting so 10000 lux is needed so the heat is also more so that's why it is uh, it is it is considered or uh, they uh, try to go for air conditioning because of the uh, lux level of light and you have the plain sunshine which is almost like 1 lakh lux and that differs according to the latitude of the place so next after we know that the light is a source and it is emitted and we have an illuminance we also have something called as the glare so when you have a glare it becomes a disturbance to you so there are two types of glare one is called as the discomfort glare and one is called as the disability glare so the effect of brightness or the brightness differences within the visual field which causes annoyance or discomfort or loss of visual performance is called as the glare so generally if you see if it's a working area you can just see uh, 
uh you have a laptop here of course you will have light from this side so there will be a lot of glare sometimes because of the reflection of the wall or the reflection of the glass or the reflection of the table etc and because of the reflection of the color so that color or the glare which gives you a disturbance in terms of work or in terms of uh, effective uh, uh what you called um, uh, in terms of effective looking etc like for example tv screen so that if there is a tv screen and if there is a window nearby so that that gives you a glare so that causes you discomfort that discomfort is called as the discomfort glare whereas the disability glare is nothing but uh, an extraneous light source which can affect the visual performance for example you become blackout when you when you just start seeing a very very large light for example a, a cinema focused light or for example a uh, light for a sports field or maybe when you travel in a car so you you suddenly see a bright light you you your focus becomes a little blur or you you have a little bit of disturbance in your visual performance itself and you become blackout etc so that is called as the disability glare so we must know how to tackle these two glares by means of providing uh, effective fenestrations and effective glasses etc so daylighting of course it's a very interesting uh, study which is done in canada so they understood that uh, daylighting can be in terms of uh, physiological and psychological comfort so the daylighting can have its light quality so because of the light quality you can have an increased productivity of the work and the occupant health is also maintained very well because of the light quality so although there are so many other elements which can uh, give you a better productivity the light gives you a uh, the most enhanced productivity so for because of that we have the labor cost savings uh, which is very important uh, today and again if you see a physiological aspect you can actually reduce the amount of artificial light which you can, which are supposed to use in a building so reduction of the artificial light will reduce the light load reduction or the electricity consumption reduction and it might also reduce the cooling load reduction okay so that gives you an energy saving so daylighting is a very important uh, uh, factor or a component which gives you uh, savings in terms of both labor cost and in terms of energy savings daylighting we have uh, a factor or a unit which is measured uh, in each and every latitude we call it as the design sky or the illumination value so that illumination value varies according to the latitude uh, because of the earth's exposure to the sun as we have seen from the first chapter uh, first the second chapter the sun is getting exposed uh, more in the equator so the light level and even the irradiation levels will also be more in the equator of course it is tilted 23.5 degrees so we will see like how it is going to give you the light level in terms of latitude so if you are exactly on the equator it is almost giving you like 18000 lux so it does not mean it gives you only 18000 lux all around the year so it means that uh, it is an illuminance which is 85% of the time from 9 am to 5 pm it is called as the design sky this is generally used for the calculation of any uh daylighting factor or the daylighting levels inside a building so for example if it's in india so india is almost like uh, 8 degree north okay it starts from 8 degree north and maybe till 23 degree 24 degree 24 degree north so we just keep uh, the nbc standards as 8000 lux so in india it is almost like 8000 lux so it, the standards will vary according to the latitude so it is uh, more higher you go it's 15000 10000 7500 lux 5000 lux so for example if it's an european country so it is very less the the lux level will be only 7000 to 5 5000 to 7500 lux so depending on that the the window sizes will increase uh, depending on that the skylights might increase that uh, depending on that uh, the techniques will increase okay so because of the lighting level again the comfort comfort also plays a very important role as we have seen earlier the visual comfort so we have to understand how to bring in lot of lighting by means of even reflectiveness by of glass etc whereas here we have sufficient and ambient lighting so sufficient lighting is available but we must know how to bring in ambient lighting inside the room so we have the next uh, technical item called as the daylight factor which is nothing but a measure of natural daylight in a space so it's nothing but an amount of light or the ratio of light at a given point in a space inside relative to the simultaneous amount of daylight available outside so for example if there is a lighting 
or uh, the light which is available outside is 100 percentage and the light available inside due to the fenestration due to the opening sizes or openings of the building it is only one percentage it means there is a li little smaller amount of opening and there is only a uh, low level of light if the if if the daylight factor is almost two percentage it means it's an average daylight space if it's four percentage it is meant as a bright daylight space so generally what happens is uh, we require about uh, 100 lux to 1000 lux for workspaces so manageably we have 500 lux for workspaces etc uh, maybe in the corridors we might need 50 lux which could be acceptable in the corridors Generally what happens the natural daylight can vary from 5000 lux in a heavily overcast sky to 40000 lux in direct sunlight. So this overcast sky is nothing but a sky which is a little cloudy. So for example uh, generally when you have a cloudy sky. So for example you have some clouds. So you have a cloudy sky. So what happens there is a lot of diffused light. So that diffused light is generally considered for as an overcast sky for the daylight factors. So daylight factor generally depends on how the overcast sky is considered and what is the type of uh, light available. So we have a formula to calculate daylight factor which is df is equal to E internal by E external. E internal is nothing but the horizontal illumination of reference point indoor and horizontal illumination of unobstructed point outdoor in an overcast sky condition. So you have to understand it's an overcast sky condition which can give you the daylight factor so the daylight factor as we have told earlier that daylight factor concept is valid uh, when there is uh, an overcast sky condition so it it depends on the daylight factor is also calculated by means of uh, three components so one is called as the sky component so which is the direct uh, component which is from the sky uh, one is called as the internally reflected component shortly known as IRC internally reflected component the next one is called as the externally reflected component we call it as the ERC so generally what happens the light tries to come inside directly so that's the direct component which is also called as the sky component the light when it uh, has a fenestration the building is have a fenestration and the light traveling inside okay it tries to reflect on the floor it tries to reflect on the wall it tries to reflect on the ceiling and then it tries to reflect on other table surfaces etc and then it gives you an, a light at a point source so that point source is called as the uh, that reflection is called as the internally reflected uh, component the externally reflected component is the light source which uh, uh, is actually reflected by means of the adjacent or the neighboring buildings and by means of the ground surfaces by means of the sun shades so we have sun shades it gets reflected in the sun shade also and by means of little bit of reflection by means of windows also so there are a lot of reflection because of the windows also by the externally reflected component so all these combinations equally when it is uh, measured at a point for example you have a table here and you are measuring at this point okay so we have to consider all these points of sc plus irc plus ERC which is sky component plus externally reflected component and the internally reflected component so this is the basic uh, uh, definition or the item which you must know 